Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to flash Betaflight 3.3 with the fast common filters and the CPU overclocking. In this version of Betaflight that I'm showing right now, that's on my quad currently, is Betaflight 3.2.3 on an Omnibus F4 flight controller. Um, so that's 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 what I'm running. Uh, if you type version in the CLI, it, it'll pop up uh, your version so you can double check. Uh, what flight controller target you're running uh, so you don't accidentally flash the wrong one. So if you go into Chrome, you need to type in Kalman uh, filter beta flight 3.3 and uh, press enter and that'll that'll load up a whole bunch of videos of flight flight footage, but no one's really shown like how to actually put it on the quad, so that's what I'm doing. Um, there's a RC groups form that you'll find. Uh, it's it's beta flight testing the fast common filter. Um, this page is just all the documentations, all the warnings and stuff that you should uh, go through before you install it, but um, I'm just gonna get right to the to the hex file. So if you tap on the third link down, it pops up a whole bunch of uh, it pops up a whole bunch of folders and and uh, versions. So just double double check that you're uh, gonna flash the right uh, the right target on your on your flight controller. Um, so I'm running the Omnibus F4, so we're going to scroll down and look for that. Um, yep, scroll down, scroll down. And then here's the Omnibus F4. You want to make sure you, you tap the, the version uh, that says .hex because the, the .bin file is, is not what you need. Uh, that won't uh, write onto your flight controller. You need the .hex file, and that works with Betaflight. So if you go ahead and click on that. It's right, um, it says beta flight 3.3 omnibus f4 dot hex. That's what you want. Then it says hex files can't be previewed. That's okay. Press download, direct download, and that should uh, pop up in your uh, downloads folder or wherever you uh, saved, saved the file to. So you should get, get to that, drag it onto your desktop or wherever it's easy to find, and, uh, uh, and head to beta flight. So for this build, you don't need a separate configurator. Um, I'm still running the Chrome app, actually. Um, it, it doesn't stop working. It's just not, it doesn't get updated anymore. So that's that's still what I'm running. I'm running the configurator version 10 or whatever it is. So press uh, local firmware um, or load load firmware local and then tap on it. Um, make sure you have no reboot sequence because if you're coming from another version of beta flight, you don't need a reboot sequence. Um, it'll just automatically go in, in DFU mode uh, through the CLI. Um, so don't tap that, but do full chip erase because that's good for a beta build like this and mm -hmm. uh, press flash firmware. So see, uh, here you'll see that it's erasing the board first. That's because we chose full chip erase. That's what you need. Um, right after this, it should, should say flashing. Yep, flashing. Then halfway through, this should say verify, verifying, just to make sure everything uh, flashed correctly. And on the top right, you can see it's in DFU mode. Um, it it doesn't bypass the bootload or anything. It just it it does it in a way where uh, if you actually type DFU in the CLI, it'll it'll uh, turn it in, turn the flight controller into DFU mode. If you want to try that, but. That's how that's how Betaflight does it with no reboot sequence. Anyways, so if you tap or if if you go down to CLI and press version, it shows that it's on Betaflight 3.3. Um, that's that's all we need to do in there for now. Now we need to get to the uh, other CLI stuff um, on the RC Groups form. It shows the first step you need to uh, overclock the CPU. So it's just copy and paste that and paste that into your CLI. And hit enter and it should automatically just save everything should save that should be fine it, it'll reboot your board okay and then this one's the big one uh, it's got all these all all this stuff that's uh, this is all the calm and stuff the stuff that I'm highlighting right now um, that's that's where the the work goes into it with all the magic I'll I'll be test flying it in a couple days but uh, 
it's currently raining right now, so I can't I can't really go to fly. But anyways, copy and paste that into your CLI. Press enter. This one shouldn't save. And then just double check that everything there's no errors or anything, and then uh, uh, type save in the CLI and hit enter. Save, enter. Okay, now uh, everything looks the same mainly. Uh, nothing really changed. The accelerometer comes default off because you don't want to be stressing your CPU since it is being overclocked. Um, I'm going to set my serial RX to UART1 because uh, that's where I soldered mine up to. Um, I'll go into configurator. I do have my motor direction reversed. Um, I just like how the, the grass and stuff doesn't doesn't get in the in the camera because I fly mainly in the field. I am running bid or uh, what do you call it? BL Heli 32. So I'm running D shot 1200. Um, I'm running 8K 8K because that's what this uh, uh, MPU 6000 6, gyro can handle. Um, the pitch degrees on my board is 180. So some of that basic stuff. This is my uh, PTFPV race quad. Uh, it's my 5-inch setup that I'm doing non so I'll rename it to that. And I do run 60 to 65 degrees of up tilt, but the max it lets you do is 50. Um, so that's okay. I don't, I don't use that feature anyway. So change that to SBUS if you're running free sky. Um, see how air mode uh, and anti-gravity and dynamic filter come all, all uh, default with that, with that... CLI stuff that we did so that that's all good leave it how it is and press save and reboot so next step I'm just double checking here that um, everything got saved correctly uh, power and battery nothing looks different fail safe uh, you don't really want to mess around with anything here um, it does come default perfectly fine so that's all good uh, PID tuning so this tune it's got here by default is pretty standard, just default tune, low derivative to make sure your load motors don't catch on fire, even more so because it's got uh, default PT1 with the uh, filters off and everything. Uh, but anyways, I'm putting in my rates. Um, these are my freestyle rates. Uh, I run pretty low freestyle rates. My racing rates go way down to like 200 degrees per second. Um, I find it's just, you can hit gates way easier. But anyways, um, press save, and uh, it should say EEPROM saved, and we'll move on to the, the filter tab. It is default PT1, and enable gyro notch filters, and all the notch filters are disabled. So if you are going to go fly this, um, uh, hover it for like 30 seconds just to make sure it doesn't, the motors don't get too hot. Um, yeah, I'm just switching the channel mapping for my radio, um, which is the QX7. I like to have the um, min throttle at 1005 because uh, I, I don't have any stick warnings on my Tyrannus and I use double stick arm, so that's what I like. Uh, RSSI channel on my XM receiver is on AUX12. Um, I'm setting up, I'm just looking through these little little panels checking if anything's new nothing looks nothing looks too new but uh, deep inside the software and in the CLI you can find some some new stuff if we go to the modes tab I'm just gonna quickly set up my different modes there's a VTX pip mode which I think is new I don't know if the latest version of Betaflight 3.2 has that but it's basically switch a switch a switch. Uh, uh, I'm guessing that's for smart audio. You can just switch it for VTX pit mode, which can be handy at some races. I think in the latest version of Betaflight 3.2, uh, there is that auto feature to you just flick your switch a couple times and it detects which which switch is uh, is done. But make make sure uh, make sure your props are off when you do that because you might accidentally hit arm or something. I've had that happen before. Just checking the CLI version again, making sure that's Betaflight 3.3. Uh, 
yeah, just be careful about the filtering settings. You might need to uh, you might need to change that if your motors are getting too hot. I do want to play around with the uh, D set point weight and the D set point transition, um, all that stuff. Uh, that's that's like stick smoothing and stuff. I'm not too into that, but um, I'll I'll make a video on that. The accelerometer I do I do use sometimes uh, for for like crash recovery and just like uh, a hand or or uh, hand takeoffs and stuff. I I like that just just for like line of sight and uh, stuff. There's there's certain occasions, but it's, it it does glitch out when you when you do too much stuff on the flight controller, like uh, putting the accelerometer on. I think that's why it's default off. So um, I wouldn't recommend uh, playing around with the settings too much. Like it does work, but they just patched this issue where uh, it'll it'll freeze up the flight controller every like 15 seconds and you can't really change any settings in like 15 seconds. So it gets very annoying. Um, that's, that's why I wanted to make a video on it because they just patched it. But as soon as you turn on the accelerometer, it seems like it's having a little bit of troubles again. So uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that and stressing out the CPU even more than it is because it is being overclocked. Um, yeah. Don't play around with the fail safe. Everything seems to be pretty much the same except the Coleman filters in the CLI. Um, okay, so we're back to the the RC groups thread. Here's a little group that I was actually talking to, to some of the guys there. They're actually really helpful. Um, I don't know why it's not loading up here, but uh, it's a it's basically like it, there's like three group chats, and you can ask any questions you have about the Coleman filters and how to set it up. If you're having any problems with it, um, any questions or comments, you can ask them all there. Uh, but anyways. Uh, here's a little bit of extra documentation and notes. Um, it's just explaining how this is tuned for noisy quads so that it doesn't light on fire or anything when you first plug it in uh, or whenever you arm. Uh, yeah, so so it's telling you it's it's not to its full potential yet. Uh, you still need to tune it a bit. Um, here's how to set up all the Lua scripts for your Tyrannus and Beta flight. And it does look like lots of people have been having uh, success with it. Um, there, there are a lot of videos on it so far, so, so that's good. Here's a little bit of a warning. It's saying uh, CPU overclock is enabled on this build by default. So don't be flying this build in like 40 degrees Celsius weather because that will heat up the board and cause problems. Anyway guys, I'm out uh, for now. See you in the next one. Feel just like a rock star